All right, guys, it's BC back with another video. So today we're going to go over a few things, one being snow check and then the next being what I'm going to build when my snow check or if my snow check ever comes in. Hopefully it comes in, but I'm not counting on it at this point. OK, so let's talk about a snow check update. The lightest and greatest news from players, they have a brake problem. You hold the brake, hammer the gas, just like I talked about in the last video there's a risk of fire. So what they're gonna do, the fix to that, is not brake kits from everything I've heard everyone saying, oh my God, the brake kits, we're never gonna get them and it's gonna delay our snowmobiles till 2025, oh my God. That's not what I've heard. What I've heard is it's a ECU reflash that they're gonna do a PDI at the dealers. So the dealers are gonna take care of this problem. That's what I've heard from pretty reliable people. So. With this being said, people are saying, oh, production's probably not gonna be messed up. I'm sure it's gonna be a little bit messed up. It already is messed up because this is the latest that our snow checks were supposed to be here and they haven't even moved in the player's tracker, which people are saying that that's not even accurate. So I'm really not sure what to think about that. Um, we are seeing some boosts, like some trail boosts, like VR1 boosts. People on Facebook are saying that they're getting theirs. Um, I don't know. I didn't order a VR1 boost, so I don't know. But I'm still guessing. I would guess like mid-January is when the snow checks are going to be built, the boost. But that's just me guessing. All right, guys. So let's get into what I'm going to build if and only if my snow check gets here, which I don't know. Okay. these Most of these things I already have the parts for. Um, they're sitting at the dealership waiting to be installed on the snowmobile when it gets here. Starting off, I wanna talk about fixing the problems that I had last year. My number one concern with getting another one of these, they're great chassis, but they were capping off so hard in the snow, in the deep snow. So you would have, I would say 25 to 50% less power in the deep snow in Colorado when we're riding at 10,000 feet. I mean, we had no power at all. It felt like the intakes were plugging. People said, put the fire and ice vent in your air box and that'll fix it. Well, that helped. That definitely did not fix it at all. So what we've heard from all the people that know what they're talking about, like the vote guys, is we are going to do tunnel dump boondocker exhaust. It's kind of like the old style of the uh, sidekick sidekick pump gas kits that went through the tunnel you cut a hole in the tunnel and the exhaust exits right near the track that's what we're going to run so that is going to prevent bogging or capping off whatever you want to call it different people call it different things but essentially it's capping off and with that apparently it's completely fixed the problem not like the fire and ice where it's like kind of fix it this from reports has completely fixed it. So that's super exciting. So that's the first thing we're going to do. That is kind of an expensive upgrade. I think it's like a thousand bucks, but it fixes the whole problem of not having power. You pay all the money for the boost. Why would you not get all the power out of it when you're in deep snow? That's what it's for. So that's the first thing we're going to do, fix the problems. And I'll if you guys didn't watch my video from last year, I'll link it in the description. It'll go over a review of the Matrix. If you haven't rode a Matrix yet, a Matrix boost yet, and you have one on snow check, check it out, and it might help you kind of plan what you're going to do when you get the sled. And in all honesty, if I were you guys, this is what I did, order the parts now because you know that there's they're going to have shipping problems, stuff's going to be on back order, you're going to be waiting for parts. So if these sleds are already late... I don't know why you wouldn't buy parts now so when the sled does come in, if it does, then you're ready to build and be out on the snow and you won't have to worry about it. Next, I want to go into the functional stuff. I've talked about this over and over again. I truly believe the first thing that you should do when you get a sled is mess with the handlebars and make adjustments that help you feel more comfortable on the sled. If you're not comfortable on the sled, you're not going to ride the sled well. An example that I talk about is if you're a ski do guy and you get on a Polaris, you feel uncomfortable and you don't ride very well. At least most of us don't. If I go from a Polaris to a ski do, I'm uncomfortable. I don't ride very well. So get comfortable on the sled. Do what you have to do. Make the little adjustments to get comfortable. First thing I'll do is a skins brake lever. Like I talked about in the video, it's not about the heated for me. I do like the heated, 
but it's just about being able to get it in the right spot and having an adjustable throw brake lever where I can get it. I use my middle finger so I can get it in the right spot when being over the handlebars. So going into the next thing, we're going to do a whole set of handlebars. We ran RSI on the axis. We work with RSI and we're going to be running RSI bars as far as we know, um, if we can get them. And that will make it, I, I like them because you can get a lower bar and get over the uh, handlebars better. Or I feel like I can, maybe it's just in my head. But I'll do everything from pivot adapters to bars to grips to heaters to bar pad, literally everything. So that'll be one of the functional upgrades that I make. Uh, let's see, I'll have to throw mounts on the tunnel to be able to mount my camera case which that's not really a big upgrade, but I'll have to do that. Um, and then a skin throttle block. The player swing guys over and over again, I tell people if you're going to ride Colorado and you're going to be flipping your sled over all day in the deep snow and it's in blizzards, you truly need to get an aftermarket throttle block. I don't care if it's skins. Just get something that makes the snow pass through. A bunch of companies are making them now. It's dangerous if you don't. Three days ago I was riding and the snow's really good in Colorado right now. Mine stuck and it was held open in the trees and it got my adrenaline going to say the least. You don't want to blow these sleds up. They're too expensive. Just get something that passes snow through and wear a tether. While we're on the tether, I'm going to get a magnetic DuraPro tether. I think it's just a convenience thing. I don't have to pack snow out of the, out of the housing of the tether. I can just get it near and it snaps on and I'm good to go. So that will definitely be on the sled before I ride it in all honesty. Now, those are the things to be comfortable on the sled. Those are the things that are going to fix the sled's problems from the factory. Now I want to talk about making it better. Um, we want to pump more power, baby. I mean, come on. So we are going to run a couple different things to make the sled perform better. The boondocker exhaust will obviously help. The next thing we're going to do, I'm going to run a skins hood this year. There's a bunch of companies that are making similar hoods. There's a carbon company, Brant's been preaching about it. And then I don't know who's making the T-Rex hood, but those are very similar. Um, there's a skins hood that I got a hold of a couple, like a month ago. So I'm just going to run that. I like skins products. So we're going to try that out. It's I, I think it's like 12 pounds. That's the number that sticks in my head. 12 pounds of weight reduction when you go from the stock hood that seems to be pretty heavy to the skins hood. Obviously, you won't have headlights, but we will supplement with a, a headlamp that's a lot lighter than the hood, so it's worth it. After that, and the final thing that I'm most excited for is Vogue tuning. So... The Vogue guys work really hard on engineering tunes um, for in Colorado, riding at 10,000 feet or wherever you're riding. I guess if you're riding at 10,000 feet, a lot of power is lost, especially if you're on an NA sled. So we go to the boost to try to make up for elevation, but a lot of the times we want even more power than that. So we're going to be Vogue tuning our sleds. We work with them. They always hook us up. They always take care of us. So we're going to run Vogue tunes. They have a really cool new program out. It They have a basically to make it very simple is a little computer that they send codes to and you can data log and uh, send it back to them and they can make tweaks to make your sled run even better but they have tunes anywhere from I'm just trying to make my stock you know boost run better and be more efficient all the way up to pumping incredible amounts of horsepower that most of us don't belong on but anywhere in between there they have a tune for you and uh, it's pretty affordable. So I was just talking to him about it. So reach out to Voke and Kremling and, and he can help you out. The last thing that we're going to do, I'm very excited about this. I've wanted to do this since I've been like a tiny little kid and that is wrap a sled. So I've been excited to basically put stickers all over my sled, but we're going to work with a wrap company, which I'm super excited about. And if everything goes right, we're going to have a wrap on our sled this year. That is if we get the dang snow checks. So, players, please get us our snow checks. We're all waiting. And a lot of us, with the snow being so good, especially in Colorado, we're not 
necessarily patient anymore like we were a month ago. So get us our sleds. If you guys have any problems, if you guys have any questions, leave them in the comments. I love to talk about sleds. Follow us on Instagram. Uh, we post there all the time. You can DM us. Uh, if any of you are in the Colorado area that want to ride, hit us up on Instagram. And uh, we'll see you on the snow. Let her eat.